In this video, we're going to take a look at operations with complex numbers. The first thing that we should know about operations with complex numbers is all the properties that we know in terms of uh, having to distribute a negative through like this one or that we can FOIL. All those things still hold to be true. So we can treat these I's that are in here in the same way that we could treat an X or a Y or whatever. However, there's one little thing that we have to be on the lookout for, and that is I squared. Because I squared is equal to negative 1. And that flows from the fact that, remember, the square root of negative 1, that's where I comes from, is I. So if we were to square this, that gets to be there. And if we square this, remember the square root and squaring are inverse operations, so we end up with that negative 1. Okay, So we want to be on the lookout for those I squareds because we're able to simplify that. Otherwise, just remember how we work with any sorts of expressions like these. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one. Here we have we're just adding two binomials and since we're adding we can really just forget the parentheses and we can just combine the real parts and the imaginary parts so we have three plus four which is going to be seven and then negative two i plus five i is going to be plus three i okay and we want to write it with the real part first and then the imaginary part the standard form for complex numbers, remember, is a plus bi. Okay? How about this one down here? Well, here we're subtracting this, so we have to distribute that negative through to get rid of the parentheses. So it's going to be 1 minus 7i minus 1 plus 5i. Okay? And then we just go about combining like terms. So 1 minus 1, well that's 0, so we don't have a real part in this one. And then we have negative 7i plus 5i is going to be minus 2i. Okay? Again, for these, when we're adding and subtracting, we're typically not going to end up with an i squared showing up in there. However, when we do some multiplication stuff, then the i squareds might start showing up. So let's try these. 5i times this quantity, 4 plus 3i, what we're going to do is distribute that 5i through. So it's going to be 5 times 4 is 20i. Then 5i times 3i is going to be plus 15i squared. Ooh, there's one of those i squareds that I said we need to look out for. Well, remember that i squared is just negative 1. So let me rewrite this as 20i plus 15 times negative 1. Okay? And I can simplify that, so that would be 20i minus 15. Well, remember the standard way to write these is with the real part first. So I should really finish it up by writing it as negative 15 plus 20i. Okay? So in that one we had an i squared show up, so then we can simplify that because we know i squared is equal to negative 1. Alright, let's take a look at this last one here. In this case, we have two binomials that are being multiplied, so I want to FOIL this. So I'm going to take 3 times 2, which is going to be 6, then 3 times 2i is going to be plus 6i, then we've got i times 2, which would be 2i. And then we've got i times 2i, which is going to be plus 2i squared. Hey, again, there's an i squared showing up, so I'm going to replace that with negative 1. So I have 6, and I'm going to combine these i's as long as I'm rewriting. So 6i plus 2i would be 8i, so plus 8i. And then... Remember that i squared is negative 1, so it's plus 2 times negative 1. Then do that multiplication, so that would be minus 2. I'll rewrite that. You don't necessarily have to write it as many times as I am, but I'm just trying to show all the steps here. Okay, then 
6 minus 2 is going to be 4, and I'll write that real part first, so it's in the I plus, or 8 plus BI form. So 6 minus 2 is going to be 4 plus 8I, just like so. Okay? So, operations with complex numbers. If we're adding or subtracting, typically we don't have to worry about any I squareds showing up, which is what our biggest concern is, outside of just following the traditional um, rules in terms of distributing and combining like terms and all that sort of thing. If an I squared does happen to show up, remember that that's equal to negative 1, which flows right out of this, which was our original definition for I, just squaring both sides. So put in the negative 1, replacing the I squared, simplify where you can, and remember we want to write the real part first, followed by the imaginary part like so. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.